everybody, it's November 23rd, 2015, and this is Saigon Sam. And in fact, I'm still wearing my uh, usual Saigon Sam shirt after all these years. Um, so I, I just wanted to make this kind of final wrap up video. I probably should have done this many years ago, um, but I think the channel really deserves this and uh, I should do it sooner rather than later. So without further ado, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for your comments and your, and your feedback um, over the years. However, um, I, I've probably been much less responsive than I should have, but in, in hindsight, I think that's probably a good thing because you know, I'm not a representative of Vietnam or any other country. Uh, I'm just a passive observer who will go down in history just as exactly that. And, and I think it's, it's up to you all to argue amongst yourselves about the validity of, of, of any of the issues I've raised or, or to raise new issues that you think are important uh, relating to Vietnam and, and Southeast Asia in general. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm not going to answer any further questions, but I do encourage you totally to comment and argue vigorously amongst yourselves. Um, but I just wanted to say a few things kind of in, in summary about Vietnam in particular and then about Southeast Asia generally. Um, I, I think that some, some of the common themes that you find um, in, in Southeast Asia um, in general are, are just that, you know, there, there's a lot of opportunity, um, both on the cost side, you know, the, the, the cost of labor, the cost of setting up a business, the, you know, the regulatory overhead is, is, is generally on the low side by international standards. Um, they, Southeast Asia is generally a pretty safe place to do business. I, I certainly think Vietnam is, although obviously there's, you know, the bribe culture there like there is in, in many places in this world. Um, but I, I certainly never felt under physical danger uh, in Vietnam at all. Uh, I think it's a, again, it's a relatively safe place to live. Um, it's a peaceful place. There's you know, great people. I, I can't say uh, enough good things uh, about the population over there. Um, but I, I think that the biggest challenge that Vietnam faces, like most Southeast Asian nations, frankly, is, is pollution. You know, it's not all their fault. I mean, we all know about the Asian orange uh, thing, but there's also a lot of industrialization, uh, not, not just in Ho Chi Minh City or Hanoi, but, but scattered throughout Vietnam. And uh, there's an enormous amount of, of pesticides, for instance, that, that uh, in fact, pesticides are some huge percentage uh, by comparison to some other countries of Vietnam's GDP. So, um, so there's, there's, there's a lot of this stuff in the environment and it's, it's not just gonna go away because you snap your fingers or you pay a little bit more in tax. Um, pollution doesn't care. It stays in the soil. It, you know, it's, it stays in the in the waterways and so forth. And as long as it's it's being belched out of so many motorbikes and cans of paint all over the country and you know trains and whatnot, it's going to stay in the air. Um, and and this is this is a serious problem. You know, what do you do? Do you just basically shut down the transportation system and shut down all the industry? Well, then you don't have an economy, right? So you know, yeah, they could switch to all electric infrastructure at the cost of a trillion dollars, and that's obviously not a solution either. So it's, it's a really, really difficult position to be in. Um, and the greener you go, you know, the higher your, your, your operating overhead, right, and the less attractive you are to foreign investors. So I understand that whole trade-off, and it's a very difficult position to be in. But, you know, anybody who's living in Vietnam or considering living in Vietnam has to understand that you're walking into a place which uh, has, has severe environmental problems. So, so yes, you might eat, you know, quote, quote, unquote, healthy food, right? You could have, you know, seafood and vegetable soup or something. But, but which waters uh, were those fish caught in, right? What were they eating? And what were the fish they were eating eating, right? Or, and, and, and were they near industrial sites? And, you know, what, what was in the soil that uh, the farmer, you know, used to, to raise the crops that became your, your vegetables and so forth? Um, you don't know. I don't know. Right. So and, and with, with lax overhead or, or, or no overhead or no environmental awareness of these issues, um, it can be a problem. And, it, and it's the kind of problem that is not going to hit you immediately. You're not going to, you know, take a plate of pho and then, and then just keel over dead. At least I, I, I hope not. Right. But but it could very well be that you end up with cancer that cuts 20 years off your life or, or some other disease. I mean, you know, we know, for instance, that there's a direct correlation. Just look on World Health Organization. Right. There's a direct correlation between the amount of, of so-called PM10 and PM2.5 pollution and heart disease and dementia and cancer and all this horrible stuff. Um, so, you know, we need to keep that in mind. Now, you know, what's the answer to that? You know, do you, do you do like I did and basically walk everywhere outside with a gas mask? And by the way, these days there's better gas masks available than I was showing in the video in 2009, you know, but do you, but do, you do that? Is that practical? Is that, is that a lifestyle you, you want? Eh, probably not, you know, but, but what are you going to do? Are you going to suck up the diesel fumes? Are you going to clog your lungs? You know, I'll tell you this. I, I live a very healthy lifestyle, very healthy lifestyle. But, but even now, I, I just actually had a pulmonary function test and as healthy as I am, my lungs age-wise are four years older um, than, than my biological age. And I think a lot of that has to do with the, the pollution, the diesel in particular that I inhaled. 
you know, and just imagine the people that, and remember, I'm the guy that was wearing the mask, okay? I mean, just imagine the people that aren't wearing the mask. What is it doing to their lungs? What is, what is it doing, you know, it's, it's not just a matter of clogging the lungs, right? It's, it's changing your DNA. It's, it's screwing up your gene expression, right? And it's causing all kinds of funky things to happen in your cells that can manifest as cancer or whatever down the road. We, you know, we have to be aware of this um, when, when we're talking about living in, in, in a place like, for instance, like Vietnam or, or other parts of Southeast Asia. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to lay this all in Vietnam. That's ridiculous. I mean, there's, there's a massive amount of industrialization that's happened o- over the past 30, 40 years in Southeast Asia. It's everywhere, and it's inescapable. You know, there's basically two choices in Vietnam and Southeast Asia in general. You can either live in a uh, very high-tech, very convenient city, you know, like, like uh, Ho Chi Minh City or... or uh, Hanoi or Bangkok for that matter, right, or Kuala Lumpur, and you can have, you know, every convenience known to man and pretty good medical care and relatively safe place to live and so forth, but you're going to deal with an enormous amount of pollution. Or you can live in a beautiful place, um, you know, like way out in the, in the boonies in Thailand or, uh, you know, in the jungle or something, and, and you'll have a perfectly healthy life, but there will be no infrastructure, you know, there'll be no hospitals, there'll be, there'll be no, you know, bookstores or anything, right? So, so what are you going to do? You're going to have to decide. There's, there's, there's a trade-off there, and, and you need to be aware of it. Um, you know, t- technology is available to solve these problems, but it's a question of how much do you want to spend and, and how much, how much are, are, are you willing to sacrifice in terms of quality of life because you have to worry about all these technological interfaces that protect you from all of this junk, right? I mean, who even knows what's in the tap water? I, I have no clue, right? And, 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 and a lot of this is, is really just a, a matter of ignorance. It's not, it's not that people are trying to kill you, right? I, for example, um, you know, I was walking around um, this mall in Singapore at one point, and, and they, uh, you know, they had these metal railings around all the floors. It's like this open atrium design, right? It's very beautiful. But so there's this guy that's polishing the metal rail. And I, I just didn't see him for whatever reason. And I just walked past him and this smell hit me. Like, I mean, it was like a, a horrid chemical smell. You know, I just started gagging. I'm like, oh, where is that coming from? And I turn around, I see this guy polishing. And, and this poor dude, I mean, he, he's got no mask, of course, right? And he's polishing this metal and, and he's just trying to do his job. But... The truth of the matter is that you know this poor this poor guy is going to probably end up with neurodegenerative disease or cancer or something. And you know I inhaled this for I don't know two seconds and I, and I was ready to just puke my gut, guts out. It was horrid, right? So sometimes sometimes it's a matter of yeah you know maybe um, well <laughs> I'll give you another example. Um, there was the same metal polish problem when I lived in the Philippines. They they would polish you use metal polish in the elevators. Um, and I felt that, well, maybe if I just tell management about this, they might actually care. And I, I kind of thought, well, this is not going to work, right? But I told them, and they cared. They switched to what I said, which is just, you know, lemon juice diluted with water, and then you wash it w- with plain water, and then you dry it off. And, and it gets 99% of the fingerprints off that metal polish would get off, but it doesn't kill people who are using the elevator, right? I mean, this is common sense. So, so kudos to the Filipino management team um, that, that took that advice. But, you know, you can't pretend that you know, whether you're in Vietnam or anywhere else, that you can just walk in and tell them how they need to do things because they're, you know, they, first of all, they probably don't give a damn and they have political allegiances and economic considerations and, and all of this and, and, and the, the old, you know, well, we've always done it this way. You know, why are you complaining, right? You know, so what if you're gonna die 10 years earlier? You know, what, what do we care, right? So, so don't assume that, that you can change your environment. Only assume that with sufficient technology and money and expertise and attention, you know, that, that you can cope with your environment, right? Kind of. Kind of think of it as okay. I'm moving to the moon. Um, there, gravity is there, <laughs> um, but you know, there's a few things that I need to live that, that are not available there, and I need to, I need to be aware of this, and I need to, to bring some extra uh, extra machinery to, to help me survive. You know, and and to what extent are you willing to, to do that in exchange uh, for living in such a, a fascinating and exciting place? I mean, that's obviously up to you. Now, yeah, if you can hook yourself up with a super high-paying you know job, like for example in Singapore or Hong Kong, most notably, right? Um, you know, great. <laughs> um, you might be able to afford a lot of this stuff. If you can't, um, then you're going to have to think of, you know, to what extent this trade-off matters for, for you. And for a lot of people, they, they just don't care, right? It's like they live for tomorrow and that's it. And, you know, more power to them. But I, my only job here um, is, is to make people aware of these kind of issues. Now, um, one, one thing is I, I would be totally remiss if I didn't tell you where I thought the, the sweet spots were in, in, in Southeast Asia. Um, in terms of where can you get a clean environment and a safe environment and, and have a relatively modern you know, lifestyle um, for a reasonable price. Well, you know, get your microscope out because there's not many of them. But in, in my humble opinion, you know, and this, this is more based on reading than, than actual visiting or anything, but from my understanding, I would say uh, the nation of Pulau. Pulau is a small island nation right in the middle of the ocean. Um, it's, it's 
it's just, it's fantastic. Just, just Google it, okay? Um, another one would be the city of Aurora, which is very forward thinking, very green thinking. It's on the island of Luzon in the Philippines, okay? Um, the other place I would definitely, definitely uh, suggest you check out is Palawan. Palawan or Palawan, depending on how you want to say it, is, in, is a huge island uh, with a lot of coral reefs in the southwest Philippines. Um, definitely, definitely worth checking out, but do not pollute these places. Do not leave your foreigner, you know, beer bottles and plastic crap all over the beach because, because I'll kick your ass if you do. So don't do that. Don't pollute these places. They're, they're, they're charms, right? They're, they're gems. I think that's the right word. But um, e even places like Bali, I mean, I, I think Bali is culturally stunning. I think it's spectacular. I mean, you know, what, what words could, could possibly be adequate to describe Bali, right? It's so eclectic, it's so rich, it's, it's so artistically deep. Um, but, you know, I, there again, I had a friend who, who visited Bali uh, basically, you know, a few months ago, and he told me, look, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, but unless you're at the beach or you're inside the hotel, it's like diesel fumes everywhere, don't bother coming. And that's so sad because there's, there's, you know, it has so much to offer and there's so much, you know, there's a great organic food there, for instance. Um, but it's just, it's just not the kind of place that I think a lot of people um, would, would really think of as a, as, a, as a healthy place to live. Um, so, so that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the essence of my message. But I, you know, I don't want, you know, to sound like pollution should govern everybody's life decision about any, everything. It's just, unfortunately, it's a very huge and significant issue. And I could go on and on and on about all the times that, that I just totally gagged because, you know, <laughs> all right, I'll give you one more, all right? Um, I, I was living in this apartment in Thailand and um, I walk into my room one day and there's like this horrible varnish smell and it's like, what? I mean, the door's locked no, and who would come in and like varnish my wall or my floor for me? This makes no sense. And I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't, where the hell is this coming from, right? Well, it turns out that the air conditioner in my unit was mounted in the same place as the air conditioner of my neighbor's unit and the varnish being poured, like poured <laughs> in my neighbor's uh, condo was leaking through the aircon system into, into my room. So, so seriously, I mean, I have to have a gas mask, you know, hooked on the wall at home. So in an emergency, when some idiot d decides to slime me with toxins, I can grab that mask and throw it on, you know. Um, but anyway, I, I, I don't want to just characterize Southeast Asia through, through the lens of pollution because I, I think that would be, you know, misleading and it would be dismissive of all the fantastic cultural and, and economic and, and peace and development value that it represents. It's just that this is something that a lot of people really underplay or they completely ignore. I mean, there's plenty of other fabulous sources on YouTube and elsewhere for learning about all the other good things about Southeast Asia, but this is one of the things that you're just going to have to be aware of and, and deal with. But again, I, I, I think that, you know, the place in history for this channel is basically for you all to argue and scream and yell about everything I've said um, and, and also to come up with new ways of, of dealing with the problems that, that all of us face, whether, whether we're citizens of Southeast Asia or, or we're visitors, you know, and, and to, to come up with better approaches um, to dealing with these issues. But um, anyway, I, th I thank you all for, uh, for your time and uh, for your opinions, good and bad, because, because when we share, we, we just enrich everyone's lives and we enrich knowledge, and, and that's always a good thing. So take care. Saigon Sam, signing off.